Fletcher! Fletcher! Hey! What did you pick up, huh? Copy that one thing. A pink tennis shoe is the first bittersweet clue to the whereabouts of 11-year-old Melissa Howell, who's reported missing three days ago. Investigators are working around the clock to find her. Uh, I remember reading in the newspaper the mother's description of the missing little girl. It said something about pink tennis shoes, so I ran to a phone. Now, did you see anyone else? In the cars, in your joggers? No, nothing. I'm sorry, people don't um, use this area that much. Where'd your dog come from? Where'd you been, huh? I think that direction, but... I don't know. They just came running when I called. I don't know. Yeah, I tried not to touch it. I just... I think it could be hers. Looks like here comes the chief of police. Keep rolling. Chief! Chief Mannion! Is Melissa Howell still alive? Is this a murder investigation? Is she still in the park? How long will you look for her? Do you think she's still in the park? Excuse me. Have you contacted the parents? Chief. Yeah. Now we have three search and rescue teams, four dogs, all in this area here. Good. Temple! Temple over here! She wasn't murdered. There's no sign of struggle, strangulation, no gunshot wound, laceration, toxins in her blood, the scratches on her face, and her arms are from the branches and bramble in the park. There is evidence of recent sexual penetration, but no DNA. Cause of death? Head injury. Subdural hematoma. She fell into the ravine, hit her head on a rock. You don't have to be here, Kevin. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. There's no bruises on her wrists. Not on her arms to indicate that she was forcibly restrained. In and the coroner said there's nothing under her nails but mud. So she didn't fight. Why? Chief Mannion, the mother's here to identify the body. Thank you. Well, my gut says that she knew this guy. She trusted him. She goes into the park. He hurts her. She's afraid. She runs. We're going to get this guy for murder. Mrs. Howell, I need, I need you to do something for me. I need a more complete list of your friends and neighbors, acquaintances. Listen to me, please. I think your daughter knew who killed her. I just, 
and I just can't believe that anybody we know would do this. God, what has happened to people? My daughter was, she was a beautiful, charming, trusting young girl, and now you're telling me that maybe what led her to her death? <laughs> Jack, I do appreciate it. I know how busy you are. I heard about that child you found. I feel a little guilty. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. How are you holding up? I don't know. Phone hasn't stopped ringing. I can barely walk through my congressional office for all the flower arrangements. Since Ryan's funeral. I leave for Boston in an hour. My son's death wasn't an accidental shooting, Jack. Brock, I know how hard this is for you. I know. I had one of my top detectives on the case. She found no evidence of foul play. Ryan never cleans his gun. He never uses it. He hates to hunt. With everything that was going on, I hadn't checked my email since before it happened. I finally did last night. There's something else to this. First, I thought it was a suicide note. But he said, for the rest of my life. And then he was dead five hours later. I need your help, Jack. I didn't know who else to go to. All right, well, let's see what I can do, Brock. Thanks. Oh, I, uh... <clears throat> I haven't mentioned any of this to his mother. Melissa was last seen at dance school. There is no evidence to suggest that she walked the seven miles from that location to where her body was found. Detective Page, you get a list of names from the house? We're still working on it, Chief. We'll push a little. Be gentle. Yes, sir. Once we get the list from the house, we're going to cross-check it with the list of sex offenders and parolees. I want every one of these people located and questioned. If you can't find them at home, talk to the neighbors. If you've questioned them before, do it again. Anybody that cannot account for their time, I want them brought in. Detectives, start with the dance school, work backwards from there. Good work. No, I want these numbers upgraded on my desk first thing tomorrow, Commander. Am I making myself clear? Do not speak. Just get it done. Thank you. Hey, you having a tough day, Joe? I'm a little cranky. Fair warning. He's not getting enough sleep. Seven months pregnant, six pillows propping up her majesty. There's not enough room on the bed for me, let alone getting some sleep. Well, now, you should have thought of that before you had that second glass of wine. That's right. Chuckle at my expense, Ella. I think we're going to have to reopen the Galloway case. We missed something? Well, I want Cahill to take a look at this, you too. Have her check for motive, All right? I didn't know Melissa very well. At all, really. Well, the night that Melissa disappeared, did you see anyone pick her up? Well, like I told the other two officers, classes end at 6 o'clock. I locked the doors at 6.15. You gotta set rules, huh? Not a babysitter. So what happens if the parents don't show up by then? Oh, most of the kids have cell phones, or they get a ride with their friends, or they just stay in the foyer and wait. The door automatically locks behind them. Although I do know that Melissa's father usually picked her up. But did you notice any uh, personality changes, any behavior problems with her? I mean, uh, Melissa seemed like a sweet little girl, but like I said, I, I own the school, but I just teach the adults that. Okay, well, we're going to need to talk with her instructor. 
Yeah, uh, Audrey Adams. You have her number right on the sheet. Annie, can we go now? In a minute, sweetheart. Anything else, detectives? No, that's all. All right, come on. Enough is enough. She is now harassing my assistant. She who? Vanessa Cavanaugh, attorney for the plaintiff, Jacobs versus Brander in the District of Columbia. Urgent uh, need to schedule the chief's deposition. She has sent three messages in the last hour. Call the woman back, please. I don't like her, Ellen. You don't have to like her to call her back. She's an ambulance chaser. If she wants me, she can come and get me. An accordion. Uh huh. Yeah, let me explain something to you. Uh, I had, you know, the near death experience when Aaron shot me. I went off the boat and I was, I was struggling, and, and I saw Sherry's face, and I saw your face. I said goodbye, and I went into this tunnel of light, and I heard the heavenly music. And Claudia. You know, Lady and the Tramp? You know, when he takes Lady outside, and they have, you know, the spaghetti dinner, and Luigi plays La Belle in those days. I heard, that's what I heard. <laughs> Eric, let me play for you. No, no. <laughs> no just a quick little... No, it's not necessary. Come on, really. snippet of something like, uh... Chief Mannion? What? Vanessa Cavanaugh. Yeah. It's usually common courtesy to return phone calls. Leave two of you alone. <laughs> Can I send him back up? Yeah. I know who you are. Uh, I'm busy. I can see that. You know, I've scheduled a deposition for you tomorrow afternoon. I look forward to seeing you. Again. No, no, no. Things don't work that way here. This is in L.A. You don't come storming in here, rearrange my schedule to suit you. I make my own schedule. I set the rules here. You know, I, nobody else does it. Not the criminals, not the attorney general, not the mayor. I do that. Oh. You got a lot of issues. Yeah, I do. And that's why I've got the accordion. <sighs> the deposition will take just a little over an hour. Don't make me subpoena you, Jack. Chief, I like to be called Chief, Vanessa. I'm telling you guys, this is serious. He's hired one of the best civil rights attorneys in the city. Right? The one that nailed those two cops in LA. You got those guys 3.2 million? Yeah, I got my deposition with her this afternoon. I'm on the hot seat tomorrow. Brander, it's no big deal. Just answer the questions and tell the truth. Yeah, the truth got me a four-day suspension without pay. That's her. Who? The lawyer. Now, go do your homework, and ain't no biting your sister, okay? Early this morning in Washington, D.C.'s Rock Creek Park, yeah. the body of the left-wing Melissa Howell was discovered by police. She's been missing for three days. Melissa's been described as a bright... So, clear to take the girls to Chicago. It's my last weekend with them. Have no on it's, a, it's a two-hour flight. You can visit. Yeah. There was evidence of sexual assault and that Melissa died from a blow to the head. We'd like to thank everybody for their support and for their kindness. Excuse me, Mr. Mr. Howell. I have the police come up with the suspect again. Service? Our daughter. Mr. Howell. Yes, sir, Mr. Howell. According to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, over 58,000 children are abducted by strangers in the United States each year. And while 99% are returned, 115 of the abducted are killed. Detectives, there's someone here to see you. Melissa Howells. Concerned parents can check out the guidebook. Mr. Howell's a good soccer coach. The girls love him. But then, it was after practice. My daughter had forgotten to turn in her shin guards. I opened the door to the equipment room, and that's when I saw him. Mr. Howe. With Angela Michaels. She was crying, and he was saying everything would be okay. He was brushing her hair away from her face and holding her. 
He was a little too close, you know? He moved away as soon as he saw me. So then what'd you do? I put the shin guards down and left. You didn't say anything? I was gonna call Mrs. Michaels, but I thought it was just one of those parents overreacting to something I didn't know anything about. I mean, that's quite an accusation, don't you think? That the coach is molesting your daughter? But then, isn't that the same thing everyone says on the news about their neighbor who just killed his entire family? Did you talk to the Michaels? Well, they said they've known Ruben Howell for 10 years, and there's no way he did it. Do you agree with that? I don't know, Chief. Maybe I am too close to this, you know? I keep thinking... I keep thinking how I'd feel if one of my girls... Yeah, well, I I lost Beth once in Central Park. Couldn't find her for 26 minutes. I'll tell you something, that was 26 minutes of hell. It was uh, all the fear, all the anxiety, the guilt. Where was she? Petting Zoo. Hmm. And she got a cat that day, named it Cleopatra. The terror tore the house up, just ripped. Hated that cat. So what's your gut on this? You think Reuben Howell's capable of killing his own daughter? Why don't we ask him? See if he'll come in and take a polygraph. Listen to me. I didn't do it. The man who murdered my daughter is out there somewhere. And I want you to do your job. I want him found. So do we, Mr. Howe, but in order to do that, we need to eliminate all possible suspects. Our daughter is dead. My little girl is gone. <laughs> Mr. Howe, I'd like you to take a lie detector test. Witnessed the autopsy. I watched them cut this little girl open, and I could have sworn I heard her heart beating. It took me a minute before I realized it was mine. I keep thinking about my own girls. I, I don't know how I'm going to protect them when they're gone. These days, you've got to worry about them even when they're with you. I checked up on Ricky two times already today. And I've been online half the morning researching Digital Angel. It's the world coming to that you need to implant something under your kid's skin just to keep them safe. Uh, maybe it would have helped this little girl. Uh, kiss Kristen and Alan for me. Howard, come on, this polygraph test. The chief wants us to go corroborate his story. He wants to corroborate. He was late picking up his daughter from Dan's class. When he got there, she wasn't. Maybe she was. Ruben, I want you to take a look at what you did to your daughter. Please. I didn't do this. Why don't you believe me? Because I think you're talking a whole lot of nonsense. I think you're lying. Please help, help me. What do you want me to say? Just tell us the truth, that's all. I am telling you the truth. I didn't kill my daughter. Why don't you believe me? Because you failed your lie detector test, Ruben. You've got no alibi. And frankly, man, I'm, I'm not buying your act. Statistics say that most of these things happen with a family member, a close acquaintance. Statistics don't lie, Ruben. Murderers do. Now, I want you to take a look at this. Ruben? Open your eyes. No. You look at this. No. Look at it! Now, you tell me what happened. Okay, you were chasing your... Uh, you, you knocked her over, she fell. You, you didn't mean to hurt her, I'm sure, right? Just tell me what happened. We're trying to make this better for you. This is not happening to me. This isn't happening. Oh my God. That's called an accordion. Right. It's evidence. Yeah, well, actually, uh, okay, help. I'm a near-death experience, you know. 
heard the heavenly choir. So that's a long story. So what's up? Oh, yes, sir. Um, Ryan Galloway, top of his class of Georgetown Law. He was an associate of Matson and Glass. They were very pleased with his work, and he seemed happy to be there. Three weeks ago, he celebrated his 26th birthday and asked his girlfriend to marry him. Mm -hmm. That's picture perfect. Huh? You like uh, half Windsor or what? Uh... Half. Uh -huh. So where's the bump? Ryan made two large cash withdrawals from his savings account within the last three weeks. There's no evidence of how the money was spent, no paper trail whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Is he a gambler? Not according to his girlfriend. Sir, we closed this case as an accidental shooting. It was pretty conclusive. May I ask why we've reopened? Sure. Just a hunch. Keep digging. Yes, sir. Dance instructor gave us nothing. Okay, what about house phone records, and credit card receipts? We got all that in a big box downstairs and another box of home videos. Nobody witnessed a girl being snatched. There's no crime scene evidence of the guy we're looking for. Basically, we're staring at a dead end. You call a father with no alibi, a dead end? Why are you so quick to point the finger at him? Just because the guy is the girl's father doesn't mean he didn't do it. He failed the lie detector test. So? Well, just give me the evidence. Let's start with those videotapes. Yes, sir. And try getting along. Yes, sir. Look, all I'm saying is, I don't really get a vibe from this guy, okay? I don't care if you get a vibe or not. If he did it, I want to nail him. I arrested Mr. Jacobs for solicitation. Uh, he was standing at the corner of 7th and DuPont in broad daylight. Did he resist arrest? Just get in. Yeah, you're pretty cute, big boy. Oh, God, oh. No, but he didn't No is sufficient. Day. Let's move to the incident at the precinct. While my client was awaiting processing, he was cuffed to a chair for quite some time. Is that correct? Just about the usual time it takes. I understand that he was eating corn chips. Yes. And it says here he was eating them loudly. Is that correct? Yes. And that bothered you, didn't it? I guess. Is that a yes or a no? Hey, you want to keep it down over there? Well, I'm chewing. Yes, it bugged me. And that's what this whole thing was about, wasn't it? The volume at which Mr. Jacobs ate his chips. Yeah, I know what you think you're doing over there, okay? You don't think I can see? Huh? No, but this is about disrespect. Didn't you buy Mr. Jacobs the corn chips from the vending machine in the precinct? Didn't you purchase the chips my client was crunching? The chips he was chewing so loudly? Is this all you got? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yes, I bought the chips. Brian Galloway wasn't as squeaky as we thought. How much more of this did Galloway download? I've got five more discs. All child pornography. This is shameful. How can someone do this to a child? How can the FCC allow this to go out over the Internet? It's virtually impossible to police the Internet. Most of this is from an e-group. You need a code to access the website. It's like a private club. What about distributors? We did get web addresses, and I'm waiting on the U.S. Attorney's Office to subpoena the Internet service providers. Then we can connect each website to a name. Maybe this is what Ryan Galloway was warning his father about. The congressman's son. Internet voyeur of child pornography. Yeah, there's a headline you want to wake up to. So somebody knew his secret. Maybe they were trying to blackmail him. Yeah, why don't we find that somebody? This guy's plastic hair. <laughs> Ooh, I want that one. Yeah. And that one for my birthday. Okay. I want the pink one. It's me and Morris favorite car. You mean that one? You two are gonna get me in trouble with your mother. You know that, right? You won't tell her if you don't tell her. I'm not gonna tell her. You think I'm crazy? It's our little secret. Are you still gonna be our dad when we move away? No, Sully. They don't love each other anymore. Well, that's not true, Kristen. Sometimes two people just grow apart, but that doesn't mean they don't love each other anymore. Look, the most important thing is I'll always love both of you and your mother, no matter where you live. Okay? Okay? <laughs> Pizza's gonna be here any minute. We need to wash our hands. I can't wash the soap. Will you help me? No. I'm just kidding. Come on.
Come on, come on, Jiggy Bottom. Let's go. You think your frog wants some pizza? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm coming. Just give me a sec. All right. It's twenty-one ninety-six with the coupon. Kristen, come here. Come here. Come here. What? What are you doing? What did I tell you? You don't open the door to strangers. You it's know that. Just the pizza man. No, he's a stranger. You don't know him. How many times your mother and I need to tell you? You do not open the door to strangers. You got it. Twenty one ninety six with coupon. I'm sorry, honey. Honey, I didn't mean to scare you. That's sweet, Brett. Yeah? Mm -hmm. How you doing, G? I am doing well. Good, good. So, uh, give me the word. It's all good, you know. Mm -hmm. You heard the one about the new bride and groom? No, I have not. About the wife and the husband, you know, that just got married. So the dude goes up and takes his pants off and throws them over to his bride and says, Hey, baby, try those on, you know. Mm -hmm. So she tried. She said, Honey, these are too big for me. He said, That's right. And don't you forget it. I'm the man in the family. I wear the pants, you know. So then she takes her little pen and top and throws and says, here, try these on, honey. So he gets them up around his knees. He said, baby, I can't get into your pants. She said, that's right. And you ain't going to get into my pants if you don't change your attitude, dude. <laughs> you know that's right. So, uh, I'm playing the accordion. Oh, really? Yeah. Why? I thought maybe I'd come over here and sit in one night, you know? Well, let me tell you what. I'm going to go and see if your takeout order's ready. Thank you. I'll let you know later. Uh, cool. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a no, huh? Uh, right. Jazz music, fine food. You're a man with good taste, Chief Manion. Mr. Attorney General, please have a seat. All right. So what brings you to this side of Foggy Bottom? Actually, you. Thank you. Just about to leave. Well, I'll get right to the point. Congressman Brock Galloway's son, you're reinvestigating his case. Yeah. Oh, you got a tip? Leave it alone. Why? Confidential FBI investigation. I got it. There's that C word again. You guys throw that word around like it really means something. I'll tell you what I know, you tell me what you know. I would, but then it wouldn't be confidential, now it wouldn't. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. You have kids? Uh, yes. Boys? Two of them. All right, suppose, God forbid, that something happened to one of your sons and you came to me and asked me for my help. And I had to tell you that I couldn't help because some high-ranking official told me to back off because... Well, it was confidential. What you're looking into is being looked at by people who know far more than you do. Leave it alone. Now, your friend will get his justice, just not your way. Hmm. You know, I think I'm going to keep checking it out, you know. See what I find out. I'll let you know. So how does Rand Galloway get on the Attorney General's radar? Operation Candyman. It's the FBI sting operation for child pornographers on the Internet. The AG's baby. So Rand Galloway got caught. Caught. 
Not arrested. How can you be caught by the FBI and not arrested? You pay someone off. Those two untraceable withdrawals. You're telling me somebody in the FBI is trying to blackmail it? Maybe. Let's see what Cahill comes up with. I'm on it. Don't forget your deposition this afternoon. You, I don't want that woman hounding me, and I know you don't want me hounding you. Sure, yeah, busy. Not that busy. I'm very busy. I'm going to get busier. It's a root canal. Yeah. Attorney, sir, she's got me all turned around. Uh, Sergeant. Sorry. Sorry, sir. Come here, Mr. Brandon. Your behavior is the reason you are in this mess. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Now listen to me. As long as you wear this uniform and you are under my command, you will behave yourself accordingly in and out of the precinct. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. We don't have to have this talk again. No, sir. Okay. Now, this attorney Kavanaugh on a scale of 1 to 10. Oh, she's an 11. I'm in as a litigator, Brander. Yes, so did I, sir. Uh-huh. Yes, she's very good. Yeah. Hmm? You owe Officer Hall an apology, don't you? Absolutely, sir. See you. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is obvious. Reuben Hall flunked all the right questions on the lie detector test. And that means what? It means it's inconclusive, not to mention subject to the interpretation of the examiner. Look at this. They asked him if he was responsible for his daughter's death. Yeah, and the needle jumped off the page. He was five minutes late picking her up. He stayed back in the office to finish some work. If he'd been there on time, she'd be alive. Wouldn't you feel responsible? If we follow that logic, we have no suspect. That's what I've been saying. Guys, I need to show you something. Melissa, how? Actually, it's not. They took this still and turned it into virtual pornography. Watch. The guys in the lab found it in Ryan Galloway's downloads. It's a fantasy website. You tell them what you want, send pictures of people you want in it, you know, celebrities, girlfriend, children, whatever does it for you. They create the image. So we think that whoever put this website together can lead us to whoever's responsible for Melissa's death. You got a name yet, Cahill? Yeah, um, Harvey Shannon, your weekend fantasy productions, Bethesda, Maryland. Well, all right. What are you waiting for? Arrest him. You can't. Why not? Because the Supreme Court ruled the Child Pornography Prevention Act unconstitutional. <laughs> Melissa Howell is dead. Look at this. Somebody tell me why this isn't a crime. Because it's computer generated. It's not real. Get me everything you can on this guy and his website. I need something to bust him with so we can arrest him. And download some of the stuff. I gotta take it with me. Where are you going? Horse's mouth. Which ones are computer generated and which ones aren't? I don't know. I can't tell the difference. Can you? Chief, the court has ruled virtual pornography is protected. Your Honor, you're the swing boat. All I'm asking you to do is review it. This is the Supreme Court. We don't go back. Virtual child pornography is a work of fiction. By definition, it is an illusion. It is a First Amendment issue and as such perfectly legal. We have a responsibility under the Constitution to protect the freedom of expression. Really? At the expense of our children? Now, where the hell does it say that in the Constitution? It is not as simple as that, and you know it. Yesterday, we found a little girl's body in Rock Creek Park, all right? Today... I saw her image computer generated in a child pornographic film. And did I mention the child was sexually assaulted? Her name is Melissa Howell. These aren't computer generated. This is the way she was. And look what he did to her. All right? I'm sorry for her, for her family. But I am still convinced we made the right decision. All right. How about this? 
750 million people are plugged into the internet. 62% of the internet sites are dedicated to pornography. The number one topic on the internet, according to the search engine providers, is sex. In 62% of the child molestation cases, child pornography played a part. Did I tell you anything? Now, I tell you what, why don't you go with me? Why don't you do a ride along and see what I see every day, week to week, and then you talk to the families of these kids. Now, who the hell is protecting them? You are. You are. All I'm asking you to do is find an ounce of reason, please. And if you can find that, then share it with your eight friends. We need a list of all your clients. I don't think so. Everybody who's downloaded Melissa Howard's picture from your website. Yeah, right. You're a filthy, disgusting human being, Harvey, and I'm this close to popping that zit you call ahead. Now give us the list. You can't hold me. You got nothing. You're lucky I don't sue you for false arrest. We got fraud. 300 bucks a pop, right? That's what you charge all the other freaks. Well, your website says 250 bucks. What's up with that? Big deal. I had a rate increase. Except you didn't update it on your website, genius. See, it still says 250. And you're charging 300. That's fraud. You're trying to take me down with some petty misdemeanor. Petty or not. That sounds like two, three years on the inside to me. Mm-hmm. And they don't have a special wing for computer pornographers in prison, Harvey. It's one big, beautiful community. And more than a few of those guys are fathers. So I'm thinking you'll be lucky to get out of there without having to be one of their girlfriends, you know what I'm saying? Cute guy like you? No. How about those names, Harvey? Press record. Mr. Samuels, you're under arrest for the murder of Melissa Howard. Don't move. Down on your knees. Jan's on your head. Did you hear me? Down on your knees. <laughs> I, I was looking for in the park for hours. I, I swear to God, I was Those looking for The pictures you got from Harvey must have really turned you on. No, no, I just wanted the fantasy. I think you just had to have it, didn't you? I didn't want him to get hurt. I didn't want him to hurt. I don't pray for your daughters, you sick son of a... I'd like to apologize. Right. Didn't mean to put you through that. This is Miss Hal. I can't believe he didn't show. Who does he think he is? One of your officers is being charged with excessive force. You need to answer. It's police misconduct, nothing else, all right? Money. You know what this whole thing is about? Money and publicity. I resent that. Couldn't be further from the truth. Then settle. No. You know why you're not going to settle? Because that way you're not going to be able to take me and my department, rake us over the coals in the Washington Post week after week, and you're not going to get the special little invites to be the, the keynote speaker at those highfalutin Washington events and get a chance to wear your Prada evening gowns and uh, I, I don't know what else. 10,000. A public apology from the officer and from you. Seven thousand. An apology from the officer to Mr. Jacobs and no press release. You know, this isn't the last time you're going to have to deal with me. Promise? You'll notify your lawyer? Yeah, yeah, if I can remember who it is. Hey, Chief. Hello. I got what you wanted. A woman at Western Union remembers Ryan Galloway making a deposit into an account. Two days later, the money was withdrawn from a supermarket on Blandenburg Avenue. Now, we have photos from the supermarket surveillance cameras on that date. Ran that against IDs at the FBI and Justice Department. Uh-huh. 
I'm, I'm getting the feeling there's some magic coming here, Gail. You ready? Yeah. The man that was blackmailing Ryan Galloway is an FBI agent. Looks like I was right. Ryan Galloway did kill himself. Do I get the washer and the dryer? No. Get the whole showcase. Yeah, it's one of yours. We could make a deal. Oh, you play in politics now? If you and I, sir, were to work together and write some new legislation on child pornography, and if it were to emanate from this office, it could hit the floor of the Congress before the next recess. However, any new piece of legislation wouldn't be credible coming from me if there's a scandal in the Justice Department. Is that your point, Chief? Yes, sir. Trading off crime is not your style. No. Protecting children is. Oh, please, don't think it's anything other than that. I can arrest these guys. Or you can. But quite frankly, I think it benefits more people if you do it. I'll do whatever I can to make sure that legislation gets passed in the House. Brock, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. assistance of Chief Mannion and the MPD, we have uncovered an extortion ring within the FBI. Arrests have been made, and several FBI special agents have been fired. This does in no way taint the success of Operation Candyman and the efforts made by the Justice Department to rid the Internet of traffickers of child pornography. With several of my colleagues in the Senate, I will co-sponsor legislation to protect our children against these predators. I will also personally lobby our president to sign this legislation. To do that now. Music? No, it's noise, Chief. Ella, how am I ever going to play at your wedding if I don't practice? <laughs> Not in your wildest dreams. <laughs> it's good to hear you laugh. Oh, Ella, good things happen today, you know? Yeah. Fletcher! 
Hey. What did you pick up, huh? Copy that one D1. A pink tennis shoe is the first bittersweet clue to the whereabouts of 11-year-old Melissa Howell, who's reported missing three days ago. Investigators are working around the clock to find her. I remember reading in the newspaper the mother's description of the missing little girl. It said something about pink tennis shoes, so I ran to a phone. Now, did you see anyone else? In the cars, in your joggers? Uh, no, nothing. I'm sorry, people don't um, use this area that much. Where'd your dog come from? Amen, huh? Same that direction, but... I don't know. They just came running when I called. He had to shoot it now. I tried not to touch it. I just... I think it could be hers. Looks like here comes the chief of police. Keep rolling. Chief, Chief Mannion, is Melissa Howell still alive? Is this a murder investigation? Is she still in the park? How long will you look for her? Do you think she's still in the park? Excuse me. Have you contacted the parents? Chief. Yeah. Now we have three search and rescue teams, four dogs, all in this area here. Good. Temple! Temple over here! She wasn't murdered. There's no sign of struggle, strangulation, no gunshot wound, laceration, toxins in her blood, the scratches on her face, and her arms are from the branches and bramble in the park. There is evidence of recent sexual penetration, but no DNA. Cause of death? Head injury. Subdural hematoma. She fell into the ravine, hit her head on a rock. You don't have to be here, Kevin. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. There's no bruises on her wrists. No on her arms to indicate that she was forcibly restrained. In and the coroner says there's nothing under her nails but mud. So she didn't fight. Why? Chief Mannion, the mother's here to identify the body. Thank you. Well, my gut says that she knew this guy. She trusted him. She goes into the park. He hurts her. She's afraid. She runs. We're going to get this guy from murder. Mrs. Howell, I need, I need you to do something for me. I need a more complete list of your friends and neighbors, acquaintances. Listen to me, please. I think your daughter knew who killed her. I just, I just can't believe that anybody we know would do this. God, what is happening to people? 
my daughter was she was a beautiful charming trusting young girl and now you're telling me that maybe what led her to her death <laughs> You still found her when he took her. She'd still be alive. Jack, I do appreciate it. I know how busy you are. I heard about that child you found. I feel a little guilty. No, 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 no. Come on. How are you holding up? I don't know. Phone hasn't stopped ringing. Can barely walk through my congressional office for all the flower arrangements. Since Ryan's funeral. I leave for Boston in an hour. My son's death wasn't an accidental shooting, Jack. Rock, I know how hard this is for you. I know. I had one of my top detectives on the case. She found no evidence of foul play. Ryan never cleans his gun. He never uses it. He hates to hunt. With everything that was going on, I hadn't checked my email since before it happened. I finally did last night. There's something else to this. First, I thought it was a suicide note. But he said, for the rest of my life. And then he was dead five hours later. I need your help, Jack. I didn't know who else to go to. All right, well, let's see what I can do, Brock. Thanks. Oh, I, uh... <clears throat> I haven't mentioned any of this to his mother. Melissa was last seen at dance school. There is no evidence to suggest that she walked the seven miles from that location to where her body was found. Detective Page, you get a list of names from the house? We're still working on it, Chief. Well, push a little. Be gentle. Yes, sir. Once we get the list from the house, we're going to cross-check it with the list of sex offenders and parolees. I want every one of these people located and questioned. If you can't find them at home, talk to the neighbors. If you've questioned them before, do it again. Anybody that cannot account for their time, I want them brought in. Detectives, start with the dance school, work backwards from there. Good work. No, I want these numbers upgraded on my desk first thing tomorrow, Commander. Am I making myself clear? Do not speak, just get it done. Thank you. Hey, you having a tough day, Joe? I'm a little cranky, fair warning. He's not getting enough sleep. Seven months pregnant, six pillows propping up Her Majesty. There's not enough room on the bed for me, let alone getting some sleep. Well, now, you should have thought of that before you had that second glass of wine. That's right. Chuckle at my expense, Ella. I think we're going to have to reopen the Galloway case. We missed something? Well, I want Cahill to take a look at this, you too. Have her check for motive, All right? I didn't know Melissa very well. At all, really. Well, the night that Melissa disappeared, did you see anyone pick her up? Well, like I told the other two officers, classes end at 6 o'clock. I locked the doors at 6.15. You gotta set rules, huh? I'm not a babysitter. So what happens if the parents don't show up by then? Oh, most of the kids have cell phones, or they get a ride with their friends, or they just stay in the foyer and wait. The door automatically locks behind them. Although I do know that Melissa's father usually picked her up. But did you notice any uh, personality changes, any behavior problems with her? I mean, uh, Melissa seemed like a sweet little girl, but like I said, I, I own the school, but I just teach the adults that. Okay, well, we're going to need to talk with her instructor. Yeah, uh, Audrey Adams. You have her number right on the sheet. Annie, can we go now? In a minute, sweetheart. Any 
else, detectives? No, that's all. All right. Come on. Chief! Yeah? Enough is enough. She is now harassing my assistant. She who? Vanessa Cavanaugh, attorney for the plaintiff, Jacobs versus Brander in the District of Columbia. Urgent uh, need to schedule the chief's deposition. She has sent three messages in the last hour. Call the woman back, please. I don't like her, Ellen. You don't have to like her to call her back. She's an ambulance chaser. If she wants me, she can come and get me. An accordion. Uh-huh. Yeah, let me explain something to you. Uh, I had, you know, the near-death experience when Aaron shot me. I went off the boat, and I was, I was struggling, and, and I saw Sherry's face, and I saw your face. I said goodbye, and I went into this tunnel of light, and I heard the heavenly music. An accordion. You know, Lady and the Tramp? You know, when he takes Lady outside and they have, you know, the spaghetti dinner and Luigi plays La Bella and those day. That's what I heard. <laughs> Eric, let me play for you. No, no. <laughs> no just a quick little... No, it's not necessary, Chief. Not really. A snippet of something like... Uh... Chief Mannion? What? Vanessa Cavanaugh. Yeah. It's usually common courtesy to return phone calls. Leave two of you alone. <laughs> Can I send him back up? Yeah. I know who you are. Uh, I'm busy. I can see that. You know, I've scheduled a deposition for you tomorrow afternoon. I look forward to seeing you. No, no, no. Things don't work that way here. This is in L.A. You don't come storming in here, rearrange my schedule to suit you. I make my own schedule. I set the rules here. You know, I, nobody else does it. Not the criminals, not the attorney general, not the mayor. I do that. Oh. You got a lot of issues. Yeah, I do. And that's why I've got the accordion. <sighs> the deposition will take just a little over an hour. Don't make me subpoena you, Jack. Chief, I like to be called Chief, Vanessa. I'm telling you guys, this is serious. He's hired one of the best civil rights attorneys in the city. Right? The one that nailed those two cops in L.A. You got those guys 3.2 million? Yeah. 